everyone this is kim with abundant life tarot and we are doing october's monthly tarot and oracle life love and abundance all 12 astrological signs readings that's a mouthful and we are doing it with an october halloween fall theme this time around um, i don't know which tarot deck i will be featuring i know it will be a tarot deck and i know it will be more of a fallish um, or shadowy type deck um, that I will be working with. The reason I don't know is because this time around I decided I was called to for each astrological sign to use a different tarot deck. I'll probably be consistent on the oracle decks but the tarot decks will be probably different from each um, reading. So if you end up looking at a video for say a friend or a lover, then you'll probably see that, hey, they have a different deck than what I had. That's because I'm just feeling like doing that. Well, no, you know, we'll see how that goes for me. I may end up finding a deck and I just fall in love and use it for the rest of the time, or I may literally use 12 different tarot decks. So we'll see how that goes. Um, of course, this is a general reading. I touch upon, you know, life, love, abundance topics, uh, shadow aspect topics. But this is for any person with this particular sun or moon astrological sign looking at it. Is it going to speak to every single thing happening in your personal life? No, but that's what a personal reading is for. So if you would like to have something more in depth about your month ahead, you can head on over to AbundantLifeTarot.com or to my Etsy store Abundant Life Shop and book a reading with me. I'm happy to go much further and much deeper into your personal situation. Otherwise, sit back, relax, and enjoy your reading. Have a very blessed and abundant and, you know, it's a harvest time, you know, this is, this is wonderful. It's fall. And so embrace it, enjoy it. Um, things will be discarding and dying off, making room for the new. So it's a beautiful, you know, yeah, there's the fallow time, but it's just making room for what's to grow. So much love, many blessings to all of you. Hello, Capricorns. We are doing your October's monthly tarot and oracle life love and abundance reading and let's get right on into it now i have to say my dog may go wild because i have a pizza being delivered in any moment so i might have to cut it short for just a moment but then i'll resume as soon as i handle that situation hopefully i get this done before the pizza guy gets here <laughs> all right Spirit, we are looking at the overall overarching energies for our Capricorns for the month of October. What's going on? What are the overall overarching energies? Guilt. Hmm. Change. Solitude. Any other messages? Okay, that's fine. Thank you, Spirit. All right, so we have guilt, change, and solitude. I get a sense that some of you are dealing with feelings of heaviness, of guilt. Maybe someone has feeling guilty towards you and you're experiencing what it feels like to be on that side of guilt. Or perhaps you're on the side of guilt that you're the one that's wearing that heavy burden of, I feel bad about something. Maybe you feel bad about a change and in going into solitude, you know. You know, you have to go within and pull within and you feel a little guilty about that. But really you shouldn't. You really should surrender the guilt. Change is good. Change is important. Sometimes you have to have some solitude to uh, get your head right, get your emotions together, get everything situated. So don't feel bad about that. Let the guilt go. We'll see where these energies also play into the rest of the reading and see how it, you know, informs and what comes of that. But... 
I, I'm saying to you as advice, you know, you really, with guilt, it's just one of those emotions that are, is really, the only fruit that it bears is that it teaches you about how to take a closer look at what's really going on at a situation, but it should never be your final destination because guilt is something that really should be just put away. You, we've done, you know, we've done something, we've made a decision and we've decided to go on and make that decision for right or wrong. And now we have to deal with that and we deal with it moving with peace and serenity about the situation. So that's how I feel about that. The rest of the cards will lay out for the remainder of the reading. So we'll spirit, we're looking for Capricorns for the month of October. What do Capricorns need to confront? What will they be confronting in October in life, love, and or abundance? Oh, nice. Guilty. Hmm, that's the devil card. Okay. And three of swords, a little broken heartedness. All right. Thank you, Spirit. What tools will Capricorns be utilizing in the month of October? What tools? What tools, Spirit, will Capricorns be using? Four of Cups, the Tower, wow, yeah, definitely change, all playing out, oh, goodness gracious, all right, Capricorns, Ooh, you know how to do it, you know how to bring the reading, <laughs> all right, and what are the outcome cards, all right, thank you, Spirit, we are looking at what what is the takeaway? What is, what's, after everything that's been done with the rest of the reading in the month for Capricorns, what will Capricorns be uh, leaving behind in October and or taking away with them to into November and beyond? What's the outcome cards for Capricorns in October in areas of life, love, and abundance? Okay. Beautiful. Mm. All right. Let's see what this is all about. All right. Thank you, Spirit. What do Capricorns need to surrender in October? What do they need to surrender? What do they need to let go? Okay, really, Spirit, really? There's a lot. Again, whenever I have these oracle cards that like, I'll spill out and it's in a particular concentration of an area, that tells me that this is a, really a main focus for you to consider focusing on in the month of October, Capricorns. Um, like I had for some of the other signs, it was love and others, it was the abundance cards. So for you, it's these, um, these cards here. So surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. And we'll do more of a reading on that in a moment. Surrender to miracles. That's beautiful. You most definitely need to do that. And then surrender denial. Oh, I like that. Surrender to your full power. So it's not all bad. It's just a lot going on that you're going to be focusing on this month. <laughs> and I'm trying to see where I can get rid of that glare. Well, but I brightened it up a little. Can't really get rid of the glare. All right, let's look at the abundance. So for abundance in October for our lovely Capricorn, friends what's happening and what advice do you have for them thank you spirit god is your source any other messages that you wish to share yes thank you god is your source let's see how i can put that 
and gratitude list. Okay, love are coupled up in single Capricorns. What's happening in the month of October and what advice do you have for them? You deserve love, nice. Thank you. Quite the spread here. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Oh my goodness, love too. My goodness. Okay, Capricorns, are you taking note? You might have to watch these a few times. There's, there's a lot going on. You deserve love, true love, codependency, and retreat. Yeah, and that, you know what? It's so funny. All of the cards are kind of playing out together and kind of, I can see all the like common connections here. And then finally, a closing card, something to a message between you and spirit for you to ponder. Sometimes this card ties up all the messages into one cool little message to you, Capricorns, for October. Spirit, what do you have to say? Thank you. Now, wise seeing, wise action. Okay. All right, so we've got quite the spread. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. I don't think the pizza person is here, although I kind of saw the dog kind of look up. We'll keep going. Let's take it all in. Here we go. So what we've got going on is quite a bit, Capricorns. You've got quite a bit going on with the Nine of Wands sitting next to the world and then above the Four of Cups. So in the position of what you will be confronting is you have been on quite a journey and, you know, it's, it hasn't been an easy journey, but it's been a worthwhile one. And at this point, you've kind of gotten to a point or a place where you've been going. <coughs> oh, that's it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am back. Sorry about that, guys. Who startled me. So, anyways, with the Nine of Wands, you've been carrying a lot of the weight of the world on your shoulders and kind of definitely carrying some outdated beliefs about yourself and your capabilities of what you could do. You start to realize this and you come to a place of understanding that you have to surrender outdated beliefs about yourself in order to be able to move forward and advance in your life to have the world at your fingertips. Um, you are going to have to let go of those um, those reels in your mind that go around and around saying things that about yourself that you that you just aren't there, that you're not sufficient enough, that you don't have what it takes to get your goals accomplished. A lot of that has kind of been playing in your head. Sometimes there's a bit of a, quite a bit of lack mentality in your life. And then in terms of feeling guilty about maybe not being further along that you like, guilty about not providing what you feel is a good life for your family, guilty about some past transgressions you've done. Um, perhaps there's some kind of a codependent situation that you find some of you find yourselves in this month and it's just not feeling very healthy and very vibrant for yourself and as a result it causes you to go within and pull within and in, into solitude for some of you um, there's three of swords energy where it's like a feeling of kind of broken heartedness some just dis love disappointment some dis just general disappointment with life but you feel like, okay, you know, I, I'm disappointed, but I'm going to keep on moving on. But I, I can't. It, it's it's starting to wear on you. It's starting to bother you, whether you're in a relationship or not. It's it, it, the 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 pattern that's been going on right now is just not working for you. Um, let's look at the tools. So you have four of cups here. 
Four of Cups is saying in the tools position, don't get so caught up with looking at what other people have and like doing the Joneses, what the Joneses have next door and comparing, doing a bunch of comparing. It's time to focus in on what you need to do, what you have to offer in your own emotional fulfillment, looking within, surrendering to your full power. That's where you, that's where your power lies here. Let's take a look. It says, surrender to your full power. Your life is calling for you to step into your full power rather than playing it small. Surrender denial. Accept people and situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. So let's talk about some decisions, okay? So you have the tower, you have the death, and you have the hierophant in the tools position. Looking like with the tower, it's like just tumbling everything down, starting over, starting from scratch, start new ideals about yourself. It's saying surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originated from the past. Then you can own your power and soar in your life. The tower does that, right? You once believed in this kind of way about yourself and then you had something happen and it just completely wipes out and now you're forced to look at things totally differently. That would be the tower and that's powerful. You know, it's very powerful because it allows for miracles to come into your life. It says surrender to miracles, Capricorns. Be open to miracles occurring in your life. Feel and know that these events are real. Let go of any resistance and banish any doubt that miracles can happen. So there you go there. Okay. So the death, again, I get a sense of you coming to, into the realization this month, Capricorns, and it's powerful too, that you can no longer continue on the path that you were going, perhaps in a relationship. Maybe this is the death of the relationship. And you've got a lot of things coming up here that tells me that something big is happening. Either the, the actual death of someone in your life or, and I hope not, but or the end of a relationship or the end, hopefully, of outdated beliefs about yourself. New ways of being and new ways of moving in the world. Um, the death card, I mean... It's like you it, you can no longer go on the way you are, you have, so it's time for a transition, the ending of something, and then the beginning of something new, and then you having the discipline. Some of you actually are relying on the old spiritual doctrines of church, going into church and going with you know into religion to kind of bring about that discipline in your life. Others may be going back to school. Others, you know, these are like the institutions, dealing with the institutions this month and using it as a tool to help you, to help you feel like you have some structure and stability in your life. Um, because there's a lot of, t you know, tumultuous things happening, but these changes are bringing about powerful things in your life, powerful manifestations that you wanted, that you said you wanted. And so that's super important. You have to realize these are things you ask for. We don't always get to decide how the manifestation is going to come through. We don't get to decide that. Yes, sometimes it may come through with a horrific accident and then you end up getting the settlement. And that and you, fortunately, by the grace of God, you live. This is an example. And then you're able to do things that you had dreamed about. Perhaps some of you hit the lotto. Others actually, you know, create a business plan and just start with a very small business and grow it. You just don't know. But you have to go ahead and stop looking at things at the surface level as the end all be all. And just step back for a moment, take a higher perspective, higher perspective and look at it. Look at it for what it is like, okay, wow, this is a part of a greater unfoldment that I may not be able to realize yet, 
but it's unfolding for what I asked for. And it, some things may be coming to an end in my life. I may be going within and being by myself for a while, but that's okay. It's going to be good for me. It's going to be good because I'm going to make room for bigger and more true love. I'm going to let go of those codependent relationships or codependent relationship patterns. Retreat, go within, and do better next time around, next relationship around. Okay? So then we have... Oh, I'm looking at my dog, seeing who else is coming through. Okay, so... Also, in the tools position, I get a sense that these two cards speak to it. God is your source. Everything you need is, is supplied by the infinite source of God, and your faith opens the doorway to receive. In God, there is no lack or limitation. Rather, there is plenty of abundance for all to share. So, you know, if you don't necessarily believe in God, you can say universe is your source, or, you know, you, the one is your source gratitude list or the goddess is your source um, this says counting your blessings and feeling gratitude for what you already have helps you to be centered in your heart instead of fixated on worries in your mind what and who are you grateful for right now keep focusing upon gratitude and you'll discover the amazing generosity this universe of this universe i get a sense of that with the hierophant in the tools position and letting that be your religion this month you know every day mulling over your gratitude list adding to it you know making a list of 30 per day whatever you need to do to really marry the two here the gratitude list with the god is your source and really believing that at your core it will help you it will be the new beginning on the the ending of your lack and the ending of dealing with relationships out of lack of self-worth into the other side of self-love, immense self-love, true love, and then true love of yourself, true belief, true believing in God as your source, true gratitude, bringing in more of what it is that you want to manifest. So... Let's talk about love for a moment because, yeah, let's talk about love for a moment here. It says you deserve love. You are lovable. Capricorns, I don't know if you really believe that anymore. Whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you just broke up, whether you're getting divorced, whether you ended a, you know, an engagement, whatever the case may be. You, my friends, are lovable. And you need to believe that. You need to believe that. True love. This is the romance of a lifetime. You know what the true love is? The true love is when you realize the true love within yourself, to yourself, for yourself, by yourself. It ends and begins with you. And then you draw in people and attract people who then respond in kind. If you don't love yourself and value, value yourself enough to set healthy boundaries and to not take any bullshit crap from people, from potential partners, from actual partners, then if you don't, if you don't take care of yourself, no one else is going to. You are the biggest teacher to others on how to treat you. You deserve love. You, and the true love is coming from yourself and then other people start to align to that vibration and come in and love you the way that you should be loved and the way you deserve to be loved. This month, I get a sense that a codependent situation is coming to a head and kind of combusting and, and ending. Addictions are affecting your romantic life. It could be actual addictions. It could, I mean, we got the devil card. Some stuff is coming up this month with, um, you know, codependency could be with food, with drugs, with alcohol, with shopping, with overspending, with working too much, uh, with what, you know, with, you know, just, I mean, the sky's the limit with regards to codependency. A big theme though is we have codependent behaviors in ourselves and then our relationships. 
And so what happens is we get with somebody else, they have their own issues, and then you get into a codependent situation. And then you, uh, oftentimes we find ourselves in this cycle of codependent relationships, one after the other after the other. But you, my friend, will probably, you will be, be facing that, whether you're not in a relationship anymore and you're finally confronting that this month and finally dealing with that shadow side to yourself and dealing with this once and for all, you will finally come to a place of dealing with it and putting it to bed while others will be dealing with it in a relationship. And it's going to, you know, spill over and you have to deal with it. But it's good because sometimes you just have to go ahead and deal with stuff versus letting it drag on and on. Then finally, we have the retreat card. It's time to disconnect from the world. Oops. So you disconnect you pull within you go within i see um to kind of work it out maybe with your partner if you're in a relationship to get back you know together and try to get on the other side of these changes that's been going on these things that have been guilty in your relationships Maybe you feel guilty about your codependent issues. Maybe your partner feels guilt. Maybe there's some guilt from past relationships you've been carrying around. You feel guilty about having, you know, a certain health issue um, that you're afraid to tell your partner. It's, it could be any of these things. But, the you know, here we have the outcome cards with the four pinnacles. It, there's going to be like kind of a pulling and going within. And not necessarily in a good way. It's like in a, hmm, I don't, I'm a little fearful. I don't know what to do. I, but I know I, I'm tired of kind of living like this. So, you know, so you kind of are in this in between phase. But then towards the mid part to the end of October, you have the Empress and you begin to say, you know what? I'm going to relax. I'm going to surrender to miracles. I'm going to have fun. I am going to be the creator of fun and the nurturer of fun. We're going to have fun. We're going to have parties. We're going to have good times. And I may even dress up for Halloween. <laughs> I may even do something fun. I may even go to a party and meet someone new. Because I finally am getting on the other side of all this tumultuousness that was going on in the early part and mid part of October. The Wheel of Fortune sitting on the other side is the Ten of Swords. Again, big changes for you happening. It may at first look like th big old obstacles. It may look bad. It may look like, oh my gosh, what the heck is going on in my life? Why is it? Why is everything turning on its head? Why is this happening to me? And why do I feel like I'm dealing with it by myself? It's not all bad. Sometimes you have to go through these the fire by yourself to get to the other side to see your strength. And that's what's going to be carrying you on through to November. Owl, why seeing wise action? Let's take a look at the guidebook. With my new little, my new oracle. Silent, winged, and wise, all-seeing creature of the night, show me the way. I will follow you in flight. Should the hooting owl come looking for you this Halloween, it indicates the need for wise counsel or further information before you make a decision. Consider act considered action is warranted. Think before you act emotionally and ensure you think strategically, not impulsively. And remember again, accept people and situations exactly as they are without denying the difficulties. Then you can see things clearly and make the best decisions. I was called to read that card once more to you. It's like, just accept things the way they are. The, the sooner you do that, the sooner things will just come to an end. So you can now move on to a new beginning in your life. But you're going to have to, you know, 
recognize what's going on in your life so you can then enact some changes. Being in denial about things and staying in this place of uh, boredom, but I'm not going to do much else about it. That's not going to get you much, get you anywhere. Big changes need to happen. Big, um, big shifts of consciousness and awareness about these particular situations in your life need to happen. You know, new perspectives need to be looked at and, and taken in. So it's going to be all right. You're going to move through into November and beyond, of course, but you got some things to work on with the devil card and you know, that's okay. We all do. Every last one of us trust and believe. All right, my lovely Capricorns. Well, much love, many blessings. Thank you so, so much for watching and um, have a very blessed and abundant October. Bye. Hello Aquarians, this is your uh, October monthly uh, Life, Love and Abundance Tarot and Oracle reading. And we're just going to dive right on in. Let us take a look at the overall overarching energies for the month of October for Aquarians. Spirit, what's going on with our Aquarian friends? for October doubt anything else true So we have the doubt, truth, oh, my husband's home, I may have to pause, finale, scrutiny. So this month, there's a lot of doubts going on, a lot of doubting what people are saying to you, doubting what um, is coming up, what's happening um, at work, in work, wondering if it, it's all going to happen. But you know the truth of the situation. You, of all people, Aquarians, know the truth of who you are, the truth of who we are, why we're here, why we're on this journey. So you remember it. And there's a big truths coming out and around you, it, both in your personal world and in your world at large. And you're just like, whoa, you're blown away by what's coming forth and shining light on your doubts um, with some truth about what's really going on. There's things coming to an end, maybe for some of you, some unemployment. Some of you, um, you'll go from a state of unemployment to employment and for others from employment to unemployment for others ends of relationships or um, ends of friendships or uh, living situations or you know things of coming to an end maybe a health crisis is coming to an end finales don't always have to be a bad thing yes there could become there could come grief and sadness with something you know in a finale state of things but it is it really always a truly bad thing in the end when you think about it i don't know we'll see right we'll see scrutiny really scrutinizing and looking at everything this month in terms of your finances your love life your home your what you're keeping what you're um recycling what you're getting rid of you just really everything's under scrutiny with you and you feel scrutinized and in turn you're scrutinizing everything in your life again sometimes it feels like a bad thing but it's not always a bad thing we'll look and see how these um cards um or these energies play out through the rest of the reading as i like to do i like to now lay out all the cards and then do the remainder of the reading so we're going to first look at what do Aquarians need to confront in the month of October? What will they be confronting? What will Aquarians in all areas of life 
be confronting in October. Some truth I know. That's a nice finale. <laughs> All right, what tools will Aquarians be utilizing in the month of October? What tools should they be utilizing? Huh? Four of Pentacles is coming up a lot, folks. In a lot of readings. And I've been shuffling these cards over and over and like, like actually making sure they're all shuffled and this, this still happens. Not me. <laughs> what tools for Aquarians in the month of October will they be using or should they be using? Three of Wands. Strength. Nice. Ooh, the lovers and the queen of swords all right and then finally what's the outcome cards for Aquarians in the month of October what will they what's the takeaway of this month of October 2018 for Aquarians in love life or abundance what will they be leaving behind what will Aquarians be leaving behind in October and what will they be taking for it into November? What do Aquarians need to surrender in the month of October? Surrender to silence. your fear of change. Okay. In terms of abundance for the month of October for Aquarians, what's happening and what advice do you have for Aquarian spirit? What advice do you have? Okay, that was me being clumsy. Let's. Oh. Oh, employment change. Release resentments about money and employment change. Oh, I'm like, what's that? Why oh, is this my husband? Working on shelves. Yay. <laughs> I'll tolerate all that noise. I'm like, what is that noise? Ah! But that's okay. All right. What is happening for our Aquarian friends in love? Both the singled and the coupled up 
in the month of October. And what advice do you have for our lovely Aquarian friends? What do we have going on? What do we have going on? Nope. This could be the one. Good. It's always a good thing, right? Bishop. So we have this could be the one playfulness. Pay attention to the red flags and codependency. And then finally, no Bishop, come here. We have a closing card from the Halloween Oracle. Let me shuffle these. All right, Aquarians. What's the closing card or message from Spirit just for you? Money, change. Lots of change is coming. Coming for you. And hey, we'll, we'll take it, right? We'll take the change, or at least we hope we will. And I'll use, I'll read from the guidebook for the from the oracle here. Um, one moment, as I light up my candle. Okay. Wow. So there's a lot going on, Aquarians, with you. A lot of change and a lot of dealing with it and having you you're having doubts like how is this really gonna happen? Am I really going to to make this happen and turn and turn a whole new like turn turn away from what I know is safe, secure to something that's not as quote unquote safe and secure, but that really feels like my true calling, my true path. The judgment card is about, you know, just this um, resurrection of, and a, a coming into a realization that you are now on a more divine path and, it, and you can no longer continue on the old path that you were on. It has to come to an end. Maybe it's a full-time job that you can no longer do it in, in conjunction with your passion pursuits. So things have to come to an end with regards to that. You know, some things, maybe it's relationships with the Eight of Cups. Bishop, Bishop, Ella, go get your dog. The Eight of Cups Go actually go get him. Ella? I'm trying to call him. Not call him. Go get him. Thank you. Go get him. Eight of Cups. So you're walking away. You're actually turning away. You're like, you know what? This situation is no longer working out for me. I need to go and move to higher ground. I need to go and, and go collect myself and do something different. I'm scrutinizing the situation. I'm seeing it for what it is, and it's just time to go. And you come to this decision sooner than you had expected. 
because there's things coming about, some big changes coming about that you weren't anticipating, some news um, and developments in maybe your love life or perhaps in some things, you know, maybe projects that you've been working on, passion projects and things you've been cultivating over time and finally some big news comes about that sends you on a totally different trajectory bishop ella i need you to do something with your dog go play with them go play with fetch or something go play with them i love animals i love children but it's like really i don't understand Play with your dog. You hear him whimpering. You wanted the dog? Sorry, guys. So, you know, with the Knight of Cups, there's some news of movement, and the world is saying, wow, some big changes are coming. And yes, yeah, some endings of things that have been like a big part of your life are coming to an end, but it's just a whole new beginning to a whole new world for you, a whole new something. And you're going to have to surrender your fear of change. It says the universe is reminding you that you are cared for always. Whether you're afraid of a change in your job, your health, or a relationship, or if you fear aging or death, repeat the affirmation, I have faith that all is well. I have faith that all is well. This month, something else that will be quite helpful for you, Aquarians, is to surrender to silence. In quiet meditation or contemplation, let go and enter the stillness within. Silence can heal and replenish you. And look, what do you know? Employment change. Let's take a look at that. Your career path is leading you in a higher direction with positive changes to support your dreams, priorities, passions, and life purpose. Trust that these changes will help you release the old and welcome the new. You are being supported each step of the way, Aquarians. Each step of the way. Here's some additional advice. Release resentments about money this month. Yes, the money system of the world can seem upsetting, but holding resentments about finances just pushes your abundance away. Instead, see money as a tool you can use to better the world, and this shift will help you attract support and golden opportunities. That's awesome. Oh, Bishop, please. Oh my goodness. Uh, Ella, put the, put the little gate down. You know how he went outside? Close the little gate. Because I don't need him in here whimpering right now. I'll go open the little gate. Oh. I'll be back as we go into the tools. One moment. All right. So now we've got less commotion going on, thankfully. Okay, so tools position. Four of Pentacles um, calls in this, this, <laughs> this is a miserly old cow. She just, she likes what she has attained, what she's, you know, gathered up, but she doesn't really want to share, doesn't know how to share, and it's going to die with her. And you got to release resentments about money, okay? And like I've read this before, it says, yes, the money system of the world can seem upsetting, but holding resentments about finances just pushes your abundance away. So if you are getting laid off, don't hold, you know, resentments about that. Let that go and move on and move on to bigger and better things and see the, the truth of the situation, which is you're now being released to go off and do something bigger for others. It, you know, if it's um, the end of a well, maybe you no longer living at a certain home and it's time to move on. You know, the truth of the matter is it's just no longer even a fit for you anyway. So it's time to go and stop worrying, like being a victim and being a victor in the situation. Look at it from a different perspective. 
three of wands in the tools position has you pursuing things, um, actually taking off and taking steps in a new direction and a new journey and embarking on something um, as far as like a new passion pursuit, turning a hobby actually into a business, turning um, just like something like an interest or hanging out with people into actually a hobby, really taking those steps to move forward in your life. And, and it's, it's a, it's time. It's time. There's endings happening in your life, making room for these new beginnings that are coming up. You had the strength and the wherewithal to deal with what, what's happening and to deal with what may come and to be able to bring about the beautiful changes you wish to have happen. Um, you know, the lover's card is, yes, it's about love and about, you know, having a, a beautiful love uh, life going on in October. Sure. But it's more importantly about um, choosing to pursue that which you love to do versus what you feel like you always have to do. Like choosing to be follow the lover's path where they pursue love, you know, for the sake of love, pursuing something for the sake of love. And that's powerful, right? It's powerful. And the, you have the strength to do that this month. Whereas before, you know, all these changes were happening in the past, you may not have been able to weather it. You may not have felt so strong, but this month, for some reason, you feel strong enough to do it. You have this internal strength about you that is just coming through and it's, it's powerful. It's like, you know, surrendering your fear of change. This is in the tools position. The universe is reminding you that you are care for always, whether you're afraid of changing your job, your health or relationship. So you are surrendering that. And I see that as a tool for you with the strength and the lover's card. You're choosing to trust. You're choosing to surrender that fear and the fear of change, more importantly. You know, the Queen of Swords has been through some things. So in the tools position, you are channeling her strength, her strength of mind, her clarity of thought, her willingness to embrace new ideas and to embrace the wisdom that comes from within, but also to be open to new ways of thinking. And she's, you know, she's sharp. You have to be sharp as well. And to be able to deal with what's to come. But you will be. You have the strength of mind to deal with whatever is coming. Whatever big changes are happening for you this month. It's not bad. This is what you've asked for. What you wish to have manifest. And now it's coming to pa coming to pass. It's quite beautiful. Um, let's look at the outcome cards. We have the Page of Cups. You know, so news of lots of different things of coming about, like news of you having uh, new job opportunities, news of um, love, uh, perhaps maybe friends have someone they want you to meet. Um, so that happens in October. And this is someone that could be the one, it says. Someone that you may be embarking on a new passion pursuit with the page of wands and the page of cups sitting next to you. Like the, this person is cool because not only are they, they have the potential to emotionally fulfill you, but they also stir the passion inside of you. And then you have the page of swords sitting here. You've got three pages in your reading and your outcome positions. Lots of new beginnings in love passion pursuits and new ideas and new things starting up in your life. So no wonder things are coming to an end and new beginnings are happening. No wonder things are happening here. But I'm not worried. You have right above it the world, the lovers, and the ten of swords. You know, you have this um, in the beginning of the month, midpoint, and then the end. And yeah, the ten of swords has her crying or mourning what is, you know, with finale, sometimes it can feel a little sad. It can feel a little forlorn. You may not be happy with what's happening, but in the grand scheme of things, it is a true blessing because a new dawning is happening. A new dawning is coming through. 
with regards to love, let's take also a look further look into that. Um, so we talked to the singles who are potentially dating someone. Um, let's continue to talk to you guys for a little bit and then we'll go to our coupled up ones. This could be the one. You've already met this romantic partner that you seek. So this month in terms of those who are single and dating, um, the person that you um, are starting to hang out with, you already know, and you guys have a playful dynamic with one another. Um, and that's cool because this is what it's going to take to kind of keep the relationship going and keep it, you know, flourishing. And it says to recapture romance, allow your inner youthful spirit of fun to shine. Um, so we'll talk more about, I have something to say to the coupled up Aquarians in a moment. Pay attention to the red flags though. It says the signs are cautioning you. As I always say, red flags don't necessarily mean that you should just call it quits for a new relationship or someone potentially that you're thinking about dating. But it's nevertheless saying here, you need to take a look closely because this person that you're thinking about dating has the potential to have codependency issues and both of you uh, could get into a codependent situation and it won't be healthy. It says addictions are affecting your romantic life. So it could either be you having your own addictions and then if you get with this potential person who also has their own issues, it could cause some issues. I um, mean, you want to be careful of that. For the coupled up, um, this could be the one that's saying, hey, this is the one. This is your partner in crime. This is your lover, the person that you love being with. You guys have a playful sense about yourself and you continue to continue that playfulness this month. Aquarian couple up uh, folks, um, you're recapturing the romance and allowing your youthful spirit of, of fun to shine through, which is exciting. However, just because you're in a relationship doesn't mean that from time to time red flags don't come up. Be careful that you spit, make sure you're spending some time with your partner. Your partner may be feeling a little neglected and may be showing some red flags that they may be going off and wanting to do things with others and hanging out and getting their emotional fulfillment elsewhere versus with you. Also be careful to, um, be mindful of any codependent um, kind of um, relationship patterns that can surface that need to be dealt with um, in the relationship realm. You want it to, your relationship to be as healthy as possible. So scrutinize your relationship carefully and make the changes that you need so that way your love has a chance to grow and continue to grow. Let's take a look at the guidebook for the money. From the Hollywood Halloween Oracle. Money. The sand in his mouth, the bandages wound, jealous of the living, eternal life bound. Hmm. Should you pull the moaning mummy card from the deck, know that change is inevitable and that no matter how hard you try, things will not per be pers excuse me things will not be preserved exactly the same way the card also indicates that this change will be for the better the endings the closed doors the barriers this is just a healthy pause and an indication that a change of tactics is needed you are not cursed you have just developed a pattern you can take control and change it. And you knew what this is referring to is what I'm adding. Um, whether it's in your love life or whether it's in your work life or your, your abundance life, you know that the change, these changes are necessary in order to grow a bigger, more expansive, more fulfilling life. All right, my dear, dear Aquarian friends, thank you all so, so much for watching. Thank you for dealing with my interruptions and disruptions this month. I wish you a very prosperous and abundant October. Until next time. Bye. Hello, Pisces. This is your October monthly uh, life, Love, and Abundance Tarot and Oracle Reading. And we're going to first take a look at the overall overarching energies that are going on in the month of October. 
paper. What's happening for Pisces? What are the overall overarching energies surrounding Pisces? Are that the energies Pisces will be oh, working through? Clumsy tonight for some reason. Lots of readings making me clumsy. divine guidance this month is going to be very important and the truth and as you navigate and deal with the energies of disappointment ultimately you're in a good place of expression in a place of much needed expression and we'll take a look a closer look at what these energies are meaning in terms of the grander scheme of things for the month of October See if we can make it where we can fit all the cards. Okay, so we've got truth. Some truths are coming out through guidance. Um, again, some divine guidance that is coming down, speaking to you, Pisces, specifically um, answering prayers, answering questions that you may have asked. Um, because some disappointments about your life or about something happening with maybe your family or your loved one or your partner or your job. It, it just, there's something that's with some disappointment, some energies, you know, that you, you find challenging. But you do, in the end, find ways to express yourself, ways to channel some of those disappointments into a beautiful, beautiful expression. And we'll see how these cards play out in the rest of the reading. And what I'll do is, like I usually do, lay out the cards and then I do the full-on reading. So the first question we like to ask Spirit is, what will Pisces be confronting in the month of October? What do they need to confront? What will they be confronting? Okay. Not too many messages, Spirit. We'll be here all night. Just a few, a couple more cards, please. One or two more cards. And I'll stop being so clumsy. Any other messages? Three. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. All right. In a tools position, what tools will Pisces be using in the month of October? What tools? Eight of Swords. The Fool. Ten of Pentacles. position for Pisces for October. Now, 
for the outcome cards. What's happening in October for Pisces in life, love, and or abundance. What will they be taking away or taking into November? And what will they be leaving behind in October? What is the takeaways from this month for Pisces? in the beginning but in the end you're going to be sitting pretty <laughs> what was that okay what do Pisces need to surrender in October. Surrender to complete healing. Surrender to setting limits and boundaries. Surrender to passion. And that's clear, which is good. I'm happy to see that in your reading. In terms of abundance, spirit for abundance for Pisces in October, what's happening and what advice do you have? Take a divinely guided chance, which is nice. Attracting, not chasing. And pay yourself first, Pisces. So let's see how can we put all these cards over here. Nice. Okay, in terms of love. For our singled and coupled up Pisces for October, what's happening? And what advice, Spirit, do you have for Pisces? Thank you. Any other messages, Spirit? For Pisces about love. Oh, okay. Worth waiting for. That's okay. Candle is about to go out anyway. Very soon. Love yourself first and finances and career. And then finally, a closing message from Spirit to Pisces. That's maybe something to tie up this reading. The messages found in this reading. The Underworld. The Underworld, where all things pause and begin again. Interesting. So I'm going to scoot over so I can include everything in your reading here. Okay. All right, Pisces. So you have quite a bit going on here this month. Queen of Wands shows us that you are surrendering to passion. That you are pursuing things that are your interests. You are going after things that feel good to you. That um, stir your soul. That, you know, hobbies that maybe have become dormant for a while that you're picking up. Maybe you see relatives or friends who are doing things in their life. Maybe they are in plays or 
they're in a choir or they have a blog or they have um, a YouTube channel or something and you see that and you want that for yourself and you start to do that. You start to surrender to the passions. You know, the Queen of Wands, she is the nurturer of passions in the Wands. It's about that fire, that passion, that desire, that those goal settings. She is the Queen of Wands also attracts in these opportunities to do so. So you find yourself being that way throughout the month of October. Let's take a look here at this card. It says, surrender to passion. Get out of your head and feel the fire in your belly. Focus on the people or activities that ignite your passion and let it flow. Certainly with the Queen of Wands that is happening this month for you. And it's powerful expression. You will be expressing this month. You will be showcasing your talents and your abilities, Pisces, like you've never had before. And it feels good. It feels so good, in fact, that you start to remember the truth about yourself and remembering, hey, if I want to be able to do more of this, I've got to start setting limits. There, This month, Ten of Wands, you're carrying around a lot of burdens anyway, just by having a family of your own. But then there's, uh, you know your greater family, and then there's your coworkers, and then there's just the world at large who needs you, and maybe you run a business and everybody needs you there. You've got so much, and you kind of, you were kind of like the martyr who took it on and ch took it that on for yourself, but really, at the end of the day, you've got to learn how to surrender and set some limits for yourself, set some appropriate boundaries, so that way you have more opportunity to do what it is that you love to do. It says here, surrender to setting limits. It is healthy to set boundaries in relationships. Practice expressing your needs. And remember that no is a complete sentence. So there may be, there may be some t things that come up this month where you have to disappoint others. I realize, wow, you may have to be a disappointment for others. But it allows and makes room for expression to happen, for room in your life for it to happen. Otherwise, if you don't set limits and boundaries, and if you don't, yes, disappoint some people or some organizations, then, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to express yourself. I mean, you have to have a balance. And this, you know... This allows for that. Perhaps the will of fortune here is signifying you receiving this message and understanding it this month by way of this reading. Or maybe um, you're having a good turn of events for your fortunes. Things are turning around. Um, you're um, getting guidance. Um, to, you know, maybe again, I just get some like intuitive guidance, something coming up telling you, you know, you're on the path that you should be on. And then we have King of Swords. I get a sense that for some of you, the King of Swords is someone who may be entering your life, um, whether it's a male friend or like he, he or she embodies like the King of Swords energies um, coming into your life, um, say probably um, towards the end of the month. But nevertheless, um, someone who has a profound effect on you, someone who um, seems to be fair, seems to be really smart, however, at times a little too sharp tongue. But nevertheless, you you would be attracted to this person, male or female. Um, and very soon this person is coming to you and coming into your world, um, for those who are single, I should say. Um, with the King of Swords also, it's a time where you are, you know, the kings are about, they're the planners and they make sure they execute their plans and they are decisive. And especially with the King of Swords, and he's about, he's the king of ideas and the king of moving forward, um, the possibility with, you know, his mind. And so here... You know, you're taking a divinely guided chance this month, like the King of Swords. All positive change and successful ventures involve a degree of risk, and you are ready to follow your divine guidance to new territories. As you leave behind that which is comfortable and familiar, but no longer appropriate for you, you make room for new and more meaningful opportunities. There you go. 
Attracting, not chasing. Anything or anyone you chase after will run the other way because of the fear's underlying chasing energy. Instead, attract what you need by sending out love, gratitude, and welcoming energy. Attracting, not chasing. And that's about the King of Swords energy. Um, the King of Swords is attracting and not chasing. The King of Swords is not going to chase you. That is not going to happen with the King of Swords energy. So that's for you. You like make a decision for yourself that you're not no longer going to chase love interests. You're no longer going to chase jobs or situations. You're going to operate in a different way. You're realizing the truth of yourself and your journey. And it's very empowering. Um, very empowering indeed. And then in terms of paying yourself first this month you learn the power of saving and investing in yourself whether you're starting a new business whether you're taking courses and it costs some money whether you're um, getting certifications whether you are this is speaking just to actually saving money out of your paycheck each paycheck it's important to pay yourself first you have to you have to you are an enterprise you are worth it and so is your future it says, make yourself your most important financial obligation by setting aside a portion of your income every time you are paid. This loving form of self-care ensures that you'll have savings to invest in your present and in your future. Okay, that's as we go into the tools position here. So in the tools position for October, Eight of Swords. So... You're going to be facing or dealing with some disappointments this month, whether you have been worried about whether or not you could get everything done and or people are having these same expectations on you and you finally had to set some limits. And so this card is telling you that you're going to get to a point very soon in the month of having to set some appropriate limits with others so you can be able to surrender to your full passions and surrender to complete healing. Open fully to the loving, compassionate forces of the universe that support your physical, emotional, and spiritual healing. And so you do that and you move into the full territory where you're like, I'm going to take a leap of faith. I'm going to go ahead and, and just go off and try something new for the sake of trying something new. I think I can do it. I think that something's going to happen here and I'm going to take a chance. And you're to being divinely guided to do so and you're expressing yourself and things, beautiful things are happening as we see with the Ten of Pentacles sitting here next to it. It looks like you are realizing some big, powerful things this month in the tools position. The Ten of Pentacles is about having that overall fulfillment in life, in your home life, in your career, in your, you know, in your body, in your health and well-being. You are attracting, not chasing in the Ten of Pentacles. You just have some powerful realizations about where you are and how far you've come and then the emperor be like the emperor just like being with the king of swords except taking it to the next level of yes you have to be concerned with your empire and what um, needs to happen to make sure everything is working as it should be and that you are strategizing and taking some some risk weighing the risk um, versus the rewards but to nevertheless taking risk and actually making some big strides in your life uh, by taking those risks taking risk in love taking risk in business and in your career and in life it, taking risk and putting yourself out there and expressing yourself the emperor puts themselves out there you know for the greater good of themselves and for others and that's what you will be doing yourself. Wow. So let's take a look at the outcome cards here. So we have Ace of Cups, New Beginnings in Love. Wow, isn't that beautiful? And then Six of Swords shows some travel. So for many of you Pisces, there will be some travel. Even some of you may be even traveling over water 
while others of you may be doing business travel or traveling for pleasure or relaxation or just just could be maybe both business and trying to get away um, world travel international travel for some of you while others is the same you are having a nice turn of fate a nice turn of events in your life. Ten of Pentacles is showing some nice fulfillment, some nice attainment, some nice feeling like I have arrived here and I feel good. My family, I've provided for, I'm taken care of. I feel like I have the world at my fingertips. I'm feeling on top of the world. And this energy is here in October and you will take it forth into November and beyond. And it's quite beautiful this month for Pisces. Yeah, again, there are you may have to disappoint people or you may be a little disappointed yourself, but things are working out for the greater good. Um, Knight of Swords here, um, having to, again, I whenever, whenever this card comes, usually the Knight of Swords is lurking right behind it. It's like saying, hey, I'm going to have to be a little sharp tongue and I'm going to have to tell people I can't do this or I can't do that. Or might have to, this is where the disappointment comes in. This energy is temporary and only is in effect for, you know, this month. Um, as you move into November and December, sure, you might be busy, but it won't be at the level of busy that you are this month. And if there's nothing wrong with putting your passions and your need to express yourself as a top priority with your family and other things that seem like it also should be a priority. Defend that. Defend that to the end. It's super important. The Six of Wands shows that at the end of the month, um, you're having a good time um, being recognized. People are, you know, maybe loved ones are seeing how wonderful you are and really just, I mean, it could, this could be as simple as people recognizing what an awesome a costume you have. Maybe you're in a parade, a costume parade. For some of you, maybe you go to a Halloween party and you have the best costume or just the best spirit about the whole thing. Others re others are recognizing the new passion pursuits that you're starting to express. And it, at the end of the month, it's taking off. And this is energies that are going to go into November and beyond. It's powerful energies. In fact, it's the six of wands. Sure, it's just kind of the beginning stages, but you're at a point now where you can kind of say, whoa, at the end of the month, where you start it, where you're like, I'm nurturing this. I'm going to make room for this and set limits and set boundaries so I can make sure this happens. I see how other people do it. I'm not going to carry these burdens anymore. And by the end, you really get that. You really understand that. Let's go into the love arena for our Pisces. So let's first talk about our single folks. So we have worth waiting for. It says divine timing is at work in your love life. The right person is worth waiting for. Don't get into the mindset of just settling for someone just to be in the relationship, just to be in a relationship. You don't want to do that. You know, very soon your partner is coming to you. I really get a strong sense of that. The person is going to have some King of Swords or even Knight of Swords kind of energy if they're young. If they're older gentlemen that's coming into your life, it would be someone, with, if you Googled King of Swords kind of description, what kind of person that would be, that would be the King of Swords who's entering. And then for someone younger, maybe the Knight of Swords. However, very soon this person will be coming into your life. It could be not just a man, it could be a woman with these same kind of characteristics. Um, but in order to, to have this happen, you need to love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive, Pisces. Remember that, okay? Because sometimes we lose sight of that. We put everybody else's needs before ourselves. We don't, we sometimes compromise on things we shouldn't be compromising on and accepting things and accepting disappointments all the time when we shouldn't. And then we wonder why we're let down in love. Well, it's because we didn't love ourselves first. So we need to be mindful of that. Finances and career for the single ones and the ones who are just like dating. It says financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. So sometimes when this card comes up, it's saying, hey, you have to do more work and less play right now, but that's okay. The break might be good because it makes room for the right person to come in. 
who you, who's been worth waiting for. Some of you, um, your finances and career are all consuming and taking over um, and not really allowing room for you to um, have a love life. So you may need to adjust that and bring some balance and set some limits for that. And then for our coupled up Pisces, um, you know, worth waiting for. It says divine timing is at work. So sometimes things aren't happening right when we want them to in our relationship or we were hoping that things would move around or move further along a lot faster than they have and you're frustrated that it's not moving along faster. It's to render to divine timing. Everything is unfolding as it should be and when it needs to. Very soon things will turn around, but you need to clearly decide what you want so that it comes to you now. Once you make the decision and stop worrying and fretting and kind of, you know, just worrying about what you don't have and why this why it's not working out with your partner the way you think it should. Once you let that go, very soon everything turns around quickly, almost by magic. And just like the single Pisces had to be told, you need to be told this um, for the couple that Pisces. Love yourself first. Your self-respect makes you more romantically attractive. So you need to still love yourself first. Even in relationships, you need to still pamper yourself. You need to still take care of your needs. You still need to pursue your goals and aspirations and your passions. That does make yourself attractive, but that's not the purpose that you're doing this. You're doing this because you have been called to this planet to do something passionate out of you to give back to this earth plane. So you have to do it. You have a mission to fulfill. Finances and career are affecting the coupled up Pisces. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. Ella, what's that noise? No noise. Oh, it's you. <laughs> so, finances and career. Financial issues are a factor in your love life right now. So... There may be disappointments with that, but you can't, again, get mired in that because if you do, it's just manifesting more of which you don't want. Let's take a look at the Underworld card where all things pause and begin again. And we'll read from the guidebook for this one. Or an excerpt, I should say. from the Halloween Oracle. Another realm, shadow filled, travel from death's bed, where we stop and transform within the realm of the dead. Should the underworld card be present in your reading, you are being asked to consider exactly what you have to do to transform your life into something you find easier or more authentic to you. This may involve changing course, it may involve trials and tests. Keep moving. Whilst things may fall away and your life may appear bare for a time, this is temporary. Space is being made into which you can create the new. The Underworld card, and that ties in everything nicely. This may involve changing course this month. Really? And yeah, you may change course. You may disappoint people changing course. You may have started some plans that are now going to have to come to an end to make room for what it is you really want to do, who you really want to spend time with. And that is A-OK. -okay. It is absolutely necessary and don't feel bad about it. By the end of the month, those same people who were naysayers and pissed off at you about it will be your biggest cheerleaders with the Six of Wands. You can trust and believe that, my lovely Pisces. All right, my dears, with regards to the finance and career card, put your love life first and foremost, but also don't sacrifice your your passions and pursuits um, for just because you think that that's what you're supposed to do. You need to still be pursuing your goals and aspirations and expressing yourself. I'm called to say that to you and make sure you understand that. All right. My lovely Pisces, much love, many blessings to you. 
and I wish you a very abundant and happy and healthy and fun October. See you all later. Bye.